We did it, Joe. We're taking out the garbage. That's right. Proud to announce that Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, is now the president-elect, the 47th president of the United States. Um, you know, we had this little thing called an election yesterday, and uh, I will admit, I was pretty nervous most of the day. Just the thought of Kamala Harris getting a promotion and, and continuing the, the failed policies of the last four years, that, that was, that could have been real. But thankfully, people of all races, creeds, colors, genders, everything came out, came out in force and voted for Donald J. Trump. Now, I want to play for you guys some of the, the copium that's going on now. Um, most of it's from last night, a couple of clips from this morning. Uh, and, and, and folks... The, this, this stuff will just blow your mind. I mean, the, the, the projection is happening still. Those on the left, they're not going to take time to reflect. They're not going to take time to say what happened. They're going to double down on the same rhetoric they've been putting out there for the last couple of years. And that is we're, we're heading to fascism. He's going to be a dictator. America, you elected a, a Nazi. Um, he's, he's, he's Hitler again. Um, um, if you voted for Donald Trump, you're every ist or ism or whatever in the book. So first clip, Lawrence O'Donnell. And this, this, I, I, when I, when I heard this one, I, yeah, here, here it is for yourselves, folks. Yeah, I also reportedly investigating more threats in undisclosed other states. So it's more even than we have previously mentioned. Let me just reiterate and underscore and repeat. There aren't bombs. The, this is about some of the, the so-called bomb threats that were made against polling places, election sites yesterday that some people were saying it was the Russians. There is no, there is, there's no real threat. The threat that happens here is the calling in the bomb threat where there isn't a bomb in place, specifically to try to achieve chaos, to try to get these sites evacuated, um, and in some cases to disrupt voting patterns. And for right. uh, kids watching for the first time, election results, they should know that we never had bomb threats before Donald Trump became a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the threats on the polling places, the threats are, are Donald Trump's fault. You got that? It's his fault. It's, it's not some, it's not a bunch of radicals or anarchists, I shouldn't even say anarchists. Anarchists are more on the right. But you guys get what I'm saying. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same shtick. Something happened, Trump's fault, blame Trump. Uh, this one here, or here, before, before I get to this clip, I wanna play this clip right here. This is from this morning, our Morning Joe. And thank you to the Glenn Beck, Beck program for this one. This one is just, Unbelievable. Historians in the future are allowed to write books. <laughs> and by the way, that question is open this morning. <laughs> yeah, oh, and if people mm, are yeah, allowed to is. go on television and say what they think. Right. Yep. If people are allowed to go on television and say what they think. We have a First Amendment. People can go on television and say what they think. In the future, no, no. which again, Sorry. that question is open this morning. No, it's not. In stupid. the future, historians are going to look back on this day Morons. and say, this is the day that America made a choice between freedom and democracy on one side and 
authoritarianism and dictatorship. Yes. Hi, the, Michael. Uh, yes, and they did. They chose freedom. That's what they did. They chose freedom. The, the, some of these people just... <laughs> The First Amendment of the Constitution is absolute. It is an inalienable right. Not that, oh, some of you get to speak. Well, I don't agree with you, so you can't speak. You can't be heard. Stop. Okay, Van Jones. Th this is a good one, folks. Th this is what we call projection. The thing I think is most important to remember is the people who said that he was a Hitler lover, weren't Democrats, they were Republicans. What? what? What did Kamala Harris do for the last two weeks? That was her campaign the last two weeks. They've been calling Trump Hitler for the last 10 years. Remember, these people liked Trump before he came down the golden escalator at Trump Tower in 2015. They all loved him. Some of them, a couple of them said, hey, you should run for president. This is nothing more than projection, which is all they've got. People who said that he was a fascist were Democrats. They were Republicans who worked for him. And so it's not, it's not just these elite Democrats over here, you know, poisoning the well. You had a, you had a pretty broad consensus from the, from Chomsky to the Cheneys, uh, from yeah. you know that, that 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 was very very concerned and remains concerned, and so I. Th and he brings up the Cheneys. Van Jones hated Dick Cheney when Dick Cheney was vice president. Now he loves him. Um, here we go. Here's another one. Joy Reid. The this one this one's a this. Somebody please. I mentioned freedom of speech earlier. Freedom of speech also means freedom to be an idiot. And I'm sorry, but th this is just mind boggling. Flawlessly run campaign. She ran on nothing. She had nothing. She ran on feeling and feels and joy. Well, yeah, I, I guess she, she did run on abortion too. But to say that the Kamala Harris campaign was flawlessly run, no joy. The Trump campaign was flawlessly run. That's why he's the winner. Um, let's go to Jen Psaki. Listen to this. This this is this is Jen Psaki when she has to say that it's over and Trump has won. And I I this is what we're going to get more of, folks. It's going to get ratcheted up from the left. This is what we're going to get more of. Can now project that Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin, which means he is the winner of this race and will return to the White House as this country's 47th president. And for, for so many of you watching right now, that news is, to say the least, a lot to digest. Um, I understand that personally. After he lost four years ago, he refused to accept the outcome and incited a violent insurrection on our nation's capital. What? We've been over this time and time and time again. Did January 6th happen? Yes. Was it a violent insurrection that was incited by Donald Trump? No. They forget how many times he said peacefully, go peacefully. 
Make your voices heard, but do it peacefully. He's campaigned while facing criminal indictments related to his efforts to overturn the 2020 results. And he's... Yeah, that's called um, lawfare. Using the legal system to go after your political opponent, which they only do in third world countries and dictatorships. Run as a convicted felon. During this which that, that is currently under appeal, which I believe he will win that appeal on that New York case. Just saying. This campaign, he has also promised to essentially be an authoritarian leader to use power like no American president ever has before and wield that power to go after his political enemies. That is a out and outright lie. That is, what, how, how does anybody watch MSNBC? Please, can somebody, somebody in the comment section, please tell me, do you watch MSNBC? I mean, the, the crap that comes out of their mouths at MSNBC. This is a man who's also bragged about overturning Roe v. Wade and stripping away women's bodily autonomy. He's That's false. He has, he has repeatedly said when it comes to Roe v. Wade, it's been overturned, it's gone back to the states, and the people are voting in the states. Tenth Amendment, that's where it should have been all along with the states. So that in itself is another lie. Promise to conduct mass deportations to crack down on the rights of millions of Americans. Mass deportations to crack down on the rights of millions of Americans. Eh, wrong answer, Jen. Mass deportations of people that are in this country illegally. They have broken the law. That's who he's going to deport. He's not going to deport U.S. citizens. Donald Trump is an anti-democratic force but he's just been elected democratically in our country. Okay. I can't state this enough. We are not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic or a representative republic. We are a republic. That's why we have the electoral college. When it comes to voting for president, if we were a democracy, we would be majority rule, mob rule, the blue, the blue cities, the large cities, New York, Chicago, LA, Houston, Milwaukee. Those cities would control who's in power in this country if we were a democracy. Because of the population centers. That's why we have the electoral college to balance things out, to level the playing field. So yes, you are voting for president, but you're voting within your state. And if that state is won by your candidate, then their, select, their electors are sent to place a vote for president. It's not hard. The system's worked for 250 years. It'll continue to work. The system is not broken. Stop calling us a democracy. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. And here, here's what might be the hardest part to hear, but we have to talk about and we have to say, and it is a hard part for, to digest for, for all of us, but we have to be honest about what we saw in this election. Donald Trump was elected by expanding his support over a number of key groups that we're gonna, we've been digging into this night, uh, to, all night tonight, as we anticipated where this was headed, and I know we're gonna dig into it throughout the course of the day today, and there will be a lot of time spent Oh my God, Jen actually said the truth. Yeah, he expanded his base. Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr. Hell, even flipping Joe Rogan, Zachary Levi. He's going to bring in Ron Paul. He's going to bring in a lot of people. So voting for Trump wasn't just a vote for Trump. It was a vote for J.D. Vance. It was a vote for these people that he's bringing in to assist 
with cleaning up the mess of the Biden-Harris administration. On how and why he won and what this will mean for the country over the next four years and beyond. But in this moment, it's also important to remember that our democracy is not built around one person. It's not a democracy. I've already covered that. Or one job. And I have every confidence that pro-democracy forces in this country will continue to stand up and make their voices heard. That's what we saw after 2016 as well. Some of those voices will be governors. Some of them will be elected officials. Some will be institutions and organizations standing up for rights and standing up for women's bodily autonomy and standing up for our climate. Some will be citizens. And many of you sitting at home right now digesting this news right now, some of them will be. Okay, I can't, I can't do any more of this. Uh, d d Raggedy Ann grates on me, okay? So, last thing here. Jen Psaki and her little piece touched on 2020. And he was trying to overturn an election. Look at this chart. So, I have a question. And you can answer this in the chat down below. Or in the comment section. Um. How do you lose 20 million votes in four years? Easy, simple question. Love to hear what your answers are. So there you have it. We've got Donald Trump heading back to the White House. So what do you guys think? What do you guys make of this? Comment down below. While you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And with that, I will see you guys later.